Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality of the best hair. And back in 2015, I made a promise to everyone that I was going to show you how to bake cookies. It was one of the Patreon goals, and we hit that goal. And it is currently 2022, and I still have not made that video. So here we are. Now, baking cookies is a very specific art form for me. Now, you might think baking cookies is easy. You might think that this here, this is all you need to bake cookies. Well, I'll have you know, this doesn't look like baking cookies to me. This looks like child abuse. Trust me, I should know. So we're not gonna be doing that today. We are gonna be making cookies from scratch. And I have my secret family recipe that I'm going to share with you right here today. First time ever shared to such a wide audience. Now, there's a little trick to this recipe that'll have you going in no time. Conveniently enough, it is printed right on the back of every package of Toll House Morsels. You're going to need two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, one cup of butter, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup of packed brown sugar, light, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two large eggs, two cups of a Nestle Toll House semi-sweet morsels, but here's the kicker. It says you need nuts. We're not gonna use any nuts. It says if you're not using nuts to throw in a couple extra tablespoons of flour, we're not even gonna bother with that. This is a special Decker Shadow style chocolate chip cookies. So step one, we have to preheat the oven to 375 degrees. Easy to remember because 350 is the basic temperature for baking, but we're making cookies, which are awesome. That calls for 375. Now, if you happen to have a busted oven that likes to just hang open all the time, what you do is you take a spare, also broken chair, and just slam it right into there, hold it closed. It'll preheat just fine. Now in the small bowl, we are to combine our flour, our baking soda, and our salt. Now, to combine it well, we have to mix it well, and my personal favorite thing to use is a whisk. But if you don't have a whisk available, you can also just use a fork. Now that is good and mixed. Now in the larger bowl, we're going to be adding our white sugar, our brown sugar. You pack it well with a good tablespoon on top like that, three quarters of a cup, and it gives a very satisfying little thump. One teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And if you wanted a little more vanilla, you can add just a teensy bit. Be careful with that though, it could make the cookie dough a little bit more runny than you want, or that you do want. It's gonna change a lot if you add a lot of it. And then we just have to beat in our softened butter. Unfortunately for us, we keep our butter here in the fridge. And refrigerated butter is not particularly soft. So the standing idea is you're just gonna stop here and leave this out for a couple of hours until it gets soft. However, we live in the 21st century. softened butter. Now in mixing all of this together, I like the good old wooden spoon, which I have in plastic for you today. It gives just enough to get everything nice and mixed, while at the same time not having all those little nooks and crannies to get everything stuck in. Now be sure to mix this well, give it enough time, because we're also going to have to add two large eggs to this, and uh, you don't want this so hot it's going to cook the eggs yet. Once 
While we wait for that to cool for just a little bit, I should mention that I had to make sure that I had absolutely everything I needed before starting this video. Checking everything around the house, I noticed I did not have any light brown sugar, so I was sure to go to the store and buy some. And that is key, because that helps it, so when you get home, you can find the bag that you already have. Okay, that's looking nice and cool. So two large eggs right up in here. After adding these eggs, we are going to beat the crap out of it. You know what that sounds like. Now this is a very specific kind of step here. It takes a good amount of patience. You have to very gradually add in the flour, salt, and baking soda mixture, and just very gently mix that in. You have to take your time, otherwise there's no telling how it's going to... And just stir it up. We don't got all day for this. I am glad I have a RoboVac. Well, I'm glad I also have a good set of brooms. There we go. Now this is when it's getting to that kind of viscosity that you really are glad you have the wooden spoon. With that all mixed all beautifully, it is time, finally, to add our chocolate chips to our chocolate chip cookies. Where the hell are my scissors? There we go. Beautiful. Stir that in there. It's going to be a lot tougher because chocolate chips are kind of hard. Oh, look at that spoon bend. Okay. Now we have made chocolate chip cookie dough, and believe it or not, that was the easy part. Now we're going to have to bake it. This is enough to make 48 cookies, 12 at a time. So, we have two cookie sheets. They are not the same size, but we have shaped our parchment paper to the smallest one, so it'll fit in both. Now, while it's continuing to preheat for the couple of degrees it has left to go, we can start on making all the little goblet, doblets, little bonnets of cookies. as the idea of getting exactly the right amount of cookie dough per cookie dough sphere to get the perfect chocolate chip cookie. You always want a big one, but then it comes out all goopy and touching all the other cookies. No one wants that. And you try a little one, and it ends up with this little tiny burnt piece of crap. Now the bag says it's like two tablespoons, but who can count two tablespoons by hand? Especially when you're dealing with something like chocolate chip cookie dough. So instead, I have my own little, own little thing that I think can help everyone out. Just imagine you have about an eyeball worth of cookie dough. If you can't imagine an eyeball worth of cookie dough, if you happen to have a glass eye, you could try and take it out and stuff your skull with cookie dough. Take that out, see how big that is. Unless you have two glass eyes, then that won't really work. Okay, screw this bone, we're just going by hand. It's a lot faster. It looks about right to me, probably too large, but we'll find out. And because we have two cookie sheets to work with, as we will be alternating every 10 minutes baking cookies, while the first batch is in, I can start putting stuff down on the second and have that ready. It's amazing. Here we go. Also, maybe spend the money that you make on advertising on a cookie video to buy a new chair. And we're going to set it for 10 minutes. While that goes on, I'm going to start putting things down for the second batch. Okay, so the second batch is ready and we still have seven minutes to go. Right, so, uh... Hmm. I guess check your social media if you feel like it. 
and hit it for another 10 minutes. But the fun is just beginning. See, these need a good 10 minutes to cool, but in the meantime, we can still keep making cookies, can't we? So, let's just slide them right off there. Get this over here. Realize we should have made three sheets of parchment paper. Go do that real quick. If you have trouble remembering 12, just remember it's one less than a baker's dozen. It's the amount of hours in a day. It's the alcohol by volume percentage of my favorite drinks. And it's the amount of toes I have. Okay. This is looking beautiful. I love it! Now these aren't quite cool yet, but they will need somewhere to sit after they do cool down. Because you know, we've packed so much butter into these cookies. They are surprising surprisingly greasy, and if you just stack them all together, they're going to turn into a cookie brick, which is considerably less fun than it sounds. So, we've got yet another cookie sheet, which I am going to line with paper towels. And what we're going to do is, when these cookies cool down, we're going to lay them out, put in another layer of paper towels, and just have alternating layers of cookie, paper towel, cookie, paper towel, cookie, paper towel. Or paper towel cookie, paper towel cookie, paper towel cookie. You know what I mean. Alright, these are cool enough to hold their form. So I'm gonna transfer all of these over. Still a bit on the soft side, but not so much I can't work with them. some beautiful cookies and we still have five minutes until it's time for the next switch. Come on, big money, big money, no whammy, no whammy. Stop! Whew! Steam in the face. Always fun when you got glasses and you can't see what you're doing around that 375 degree oven. Okay. While we are taking care of this brand new beautiful batch, of cookies, getting the next set ready to go in. So thank you to everyone who has supported the channel on Patreon to help make this possible. It was directly your support that is responsible for this particular video. And if you're enjoying it, why not give it a like? Why not? And if you like me, why not subscribe? Unless this is the first video you're watching, in which case you might be very surprised to find out that I generally don't bake cookies. I mostly review horror movies. A lot of action movies and kaiju movies. I generally watch a lot of movies and talk about movies, but YouTube doesn't like it when I watch movies and talk about movies. They keep telling me that my viewers aren't interested in it when they don't send it out to them. And that I should expand to other things. And they're probably going to send this one out to you. So hey, now this is a nice one. After you're done with all of your chocolate chips, you can still have a good amount of cookie dough left. And that there, doggies love it. But to be fair, doggies love the whole thing, but the chocolate chips will really mess them up, so mm, don't do that. And the source of our great cookies, the cookie pentagram. Now let's continue. Our beautiful stack. Hey, Future Decker here. I just realized that I put this whole video together. I also already uploaded it. I edited, I did everything, and I forgot to actually show you the finished cookies, which seems like a kind of important detail to have. So, we have what is left of the cookies are put together. We have the little doggy cookie here. No chocolate chips in there, perfect. Lou is gonna love that one later. Well, let's get a nice, nice one here. You can see just, just slightly little golden brown. That's a, with the, the parchment paper, that particular kind of baking sheet. The baking sheet is important. 
Uh, but yeah, this just kind of breaks apart. It's nice, it's thick, it's soft. It is beautifully chocolate chippy. So the cookies are fantastic. They are just moist enough to be delicious, not that kind of disturbing moist that you don't ever want to hear for the rest of your life. And if you're going to store them for later, I would suggest using a large Ziploc bag, especially after getting them, getting all of that grease out with the paper towels. Beautiful cookies. And thank you very much for watching the video again. And I'll be back with more horror movie reviews. And that about does it for our cookie making adventure. There's a lot of cookies left to make, but you have all the knowledge you need to make the best damn cookies of your life. Show them to your grandma. She will be proud of you. She'll be wondering how in the heck you broke into her secret vault and found her recipe book. You might want to tell her here if she likes horror movie reviews. But in any case, thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, he's supposed to leave the butter out. We still have five minutes until it's time for the next switch.